And welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Camp Myers. We're here each week discussing interesting topics and visiting with some interesting people. And this week we're going to meet Paul Corey. Yes, we're going to be talking about what we've called the new destination in town. The Cole Court Hotel, downtown Oklahoma City, just recently renovated a beautiful place. And Paul's going to tell us about that, how that came about, what uh, that's going to do to uh, uh, aid our tourism in downtown Oklahoma City. It's another hotel opening up, uh, opened mm -hmm. now. Uh, and then, of course, uh, in the three or four months, we'll have the Scurve and join it, I suppose. Right. We're going to have a lot of new uh, room space, and I guess you may have some ideas mm -hmm. about how that assists us in uh, in attracting conventions and all, but this Cole Court Hotel is indeed a destination. I mean, it is just not a pedestrian type hotel. It's a it's an upscale boutique hotel that is absolutely beautiful, uh, retaining a lot of the old appointments that were uh, put in it when it was an office building and built uh, in the early part of the century. I don't mm -hmm. know exactly what year it was uh, when it was built, but it's a gorgeous mm -hmm. place, and I think uh, you'll love finding out about it and knowing that it's in our city. Paul is a resident of Tulsa, grew up there, and has already done the Ambassador Hotel up there. So uh, he has some experience in these boutique hotels, and it should be fascinating for him to discuss his experience in Tulsa and now opening up the hotel in Oklahoma City. The Colcord Hotel, Paul Corey, coming up on The Verdict. At Chesapeake Energy, here's a few of our favorite hornets. Alexis likes reading. Sam enjoys history. Alec loves math. Chesapeake is proud to support both the Oklahoma City NBA Hornets and the Young Hornets at Horace Mann Elementary, where over 150 Chesapeake employees mentor to children each week. The students gain a lot from the experience, but not as much as we do. Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. Looks like somebody doesn't want you to know the facts about Cox Digital Telephone. Maybe it's because over one and a half million customers are saving big, and you can too. Plus, you'll save even more on all your Cox services when you bundle today. Oh, here's that new phone service I've been hearing about. So, while the phone company may not like competition, nice dog. you're gonna love it. Nice dog. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. We are very pleased today to have with us Paul Corey, founder and president of uh, Corey Properties, the developer of the Colcourt Hotel. Uh, Paul did his undergraduate work at the University of Tulsa and is a Tulsa native, I guess. Right. Uh, he has uh, been involved in banking and commercial real estate development. He's active in many activities in the Tulsa community, including the Mayor's Blue Ribbon Task Force on downtown Tulsa and uh, many other things. Uh, he's and been involved and uh, been responsible for the restoration of the Ambassador Hotel in Tulsa, which is uh, a boutique uh, hotel in Tulsa that's getting rave reviews. And we're sure pleased you'd come and talk to us about the call court. Thank you. I think we need to start with the Ambassador Hotel because that's a, a great hotel in downtown Tulsa. Tell us, go back and say, why did you decide to get in the boutique hotel business? Is that a, is that a good day or a bad day? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good day and uh, it's, it's been a big part of my career for the last seven years and so um, I had worked for a client, done some consulting for a client who had some hotels around the country so I had some exposure to some 
smaller hotels and high end, and so I knew enough to be dangerous. And uh, someone had approached the Diocese of Oklahoma about donating a, a closed building that had been abandoned for 15 years, and so they asked me to look at it, and I said, run. <laughs> and, uh, but we ended up agreeing to do a ground lease and taking some time to look at it, and it really took five years to figure out the highest and best use for the property. And uh, it was, at the time, I think it was a, a bold move, and a lot of people were skeptical. The locations in between downtown and, and say, the historic residential district, and there was nothing like it anywhere in Tulsa or the state. So trying to do feasibility analysis was somewhat complicated. Sure. But in the end, I think I was down to my last bank, and uh, <laughs> we prevailed, and it's been an incredible success. Okay, so the Ambassador Hotel opens up and, and it's success, and by now I guess you're thinking, well, I, I must know a little bit, this one's right. working out, and, you, and somehow you get uh, drawn to Oklahoma City and see another property. How did all that take place? Well, actually, the Ambassador now has been open for uh, six plus years, and so time flies, and I uh, had been looking, um, as you know, I've done some other investing over here in the real estate market, and uh, uh, shortly, before, directly before you became mayor, they were looking at the uh, renovation of the Skirvin. And so we started doing our uh, feasibility on that, threw our hat in the ring and made a run at that, and we were not selected. And so some, sometime through our adversity comes you know, better opportunities, and I had several people say you should look at the call cord, it would make a great hotel. Hmm. I kind of you know, dismissed it, still licking my wounds a little bit, and then uh, had someone introduce me to the owners. I was so impressed with the building. I mean, it's a magnificent building. The lobby is second to none. And uh, through a very short scenario, Steve Brown and Steve Brout, who were the primary owners of the building, agreed to a, a, a partnership where they would contribute the building and we would renovate it into a boutique hotel. And so really from that point, we, from the time we made our deal and brought it online, it was probably uh, a year and a half, two years, very short, yeah. very short period. Tell us a little bit about the history of the building as you understand it. It was built approximately when? 1910, first high rise in Oklahoma. Uh, the, the designer, although it was a uh, Oklahoma City architect, they incorporated the uh, consulted with Sullivan, Louis Sullivan out of Chicago, who's a very famous architect, considered the, the uh, architect that restored Chicago after the great Chicago fire, and he was also the mentor for Frank Lloyd Wright. And his relief work is on the design of the building. But the few stories I've heard about it is that Mr. Colcourt had a partner, and they uh, wanted to bring this building on. And some of the original drawings call this the Colcourt Hotel, hmm. but it was never a hotel. And the story is that these two had a disagreement about whether it would be uh, the need was better for a hotel or an office building, and Colcord bought them out and prevailed. And and for a hundred years, virtually uh, almost a hundred years, it, it has been uh, an office building. And then we purchased it, or through the partnership, uh, terminated all the leases, gutted the the building, and restored it as a hotel. Well, it's a lobby area and all. Is that the original? Uh, uh building uh, as right. it stood or have you uh, changed all that? The lobby has some slight modifications. We had to create uh, a reception area uh, yeah. to check in and then we had to create a, a guest seating area but other than that it's been preserved. Yeah. I mean you, you I think you saw it under both scenarios sure. but we, we made a, a very concerted effort to preserve the lobby and, and, and the, the marble work. They, they call it bookend marble where they take pieces, they cut the marble, open it up, and so mm -hmm. these are 15 foot high ceilings and it's bookend matching, and it's, it's beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful work. Let's take a look at some pictures yeah. that your staff has uh, provided. This is the Colcord Hotel, downtown Oklahoma City, just opened up in October. Paul, uh, talk that, to the pictures. Here. That's the lobby, the, mm -hmm. the Bourne is the red leather piece sitting in the middle, and those are the uh, nickel plated elevators, and the chandeliers are all restored and original. This is a, this, I like this piece. This um, is an artist, my, I have a daughter that is in college uh, in Savannah, at the Savannah College of Art and Design. It's a big art community. And this lady, I saw her work, that is actually, it looks like a mosaic, it's actually canvas, it's cut out, reapplied. We purchased five of her pieces, I call this 
uh, sultry savanna nights. I'm really not, we're going to have a naming contest for her, but <laughs> uh, it, it, it just absolutely expresses what we want to say. And about where is this? Where it's is in the lobby in behind the, lobby the front area. desk, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the grand staircase that leads up to the mezzanine where the meeting rooms are. Again, there's another one of her pieces, but it's a, that staircase goes up and down to the lower level where the EXO restaurant is. It's, it's a very nice staircase. This is one of the rooms. We custom designed these beds. Um, they are large, substantial headboards with cantilevered nightstands. This is another view of it. You can see the duvet covers in red. We have some ex accent red pieces. The lighting is attached to the bed. Um, bathroom shot, again, a little bit more classic contemporaries that look very clean. Uh, we really like our bathrooms. We've had a lot of good feedback. This is a chandelier in the restaurant Soleil. It has a Chihuly resemblance, but it's actually produced by an artist out of Norman. And uh, there's a shot of the building being constructed. Imagine that in 1910, right after statehood, mm -hmm. having the, and then there's obviously a post shot of it. It's a beautiful building, terracotta facade. Uh, that's a shot of the lobby, the seating area. The, we bring, brought in some contemporary look to go with the traditional look. I, I think it really ended up coming uh, across well. Some seating in the rooms, uh, suede with piping on it. That is a, a picture in the, in the foreground that was commissioned that is a rendering of the call core done by an artist in uh, Florida. All of our artwork is original. Again, this is a, a room shot in the uh, suite. Uh, custom furniture, 34 inch flat screen TV. Uh, just again, very uh, soft palettes. Another shot there, another view of another rendering of the call cord um, in a suite. I think that's the last picture. We're going to have to get to a break. Paul Corey is our guest. He has just uh, reopened uh, the call cord building downtown Oklahoma City. It is a boutique hotel. More with Paul on his property in Oklahoma City and also his uh, thoughts on Tulsa when we get back. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 2-3 child. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. One in four women will be a victim of domestic or sexual violence in their lifetime. That's too many. That's why we want you to know that if you or someone you know is suffering at the hands of an abuser, there is help. Call the Oklahoma Safe Line at 1-800-522-SAFE for access to state and local resources that can truly make a difference. Call anonymously, call toll free, call today because domestic violence is not a game. It's, it's life or death. Just keep it. Thank you. Dr. Kessler? What's up with the pizzas? Well, I just got my first satellite bill and those extra fees were a bit of a shocker. So I had to take a second job. Hey! This was supposed to be pepperoni, Dillweed. Hey, it's Dr. Dillweed to you. Whatever. Kids. <laughs> it's, it's
it's cool. I, you know, I'm a people person. Don't live in satellite denial. Get all your entertainment without the hidden charges from Cox, your friend in the digital age. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. This week's guest is Paul Corey, a developer of hotels. He's done the Ambassador Hotel in Tulsa and uh, the Colcord Hotel in downtown Oklahoma City. And we're spending most of our time on the Colcord because it has just opened uh, in downtown. Kent, where do you want to go from here? I'd like to know generally the size of the number of rooms, I should say, uh, in the Colcord and also comment on the size of the staff you have to have. Size of staff. Well, there's 108 rooms, which is are they Part, all suites? Or uh, no, some, there's, some there's, suites? there's ten suites, and then our big daddy is the rock star suite. <laughs> is that on the top? <laughs> That's on the That's top. That's where you would stay, Ken. That, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for big, obvious reasons. <laughs> big showers, big, you know, <laughs> dining room. It's beautiful. Great view of the myriad gardens. Uh, we have 108 rooms. Ten of those are our suites. Um, Part of what makes a boutique a boutique is the size of the number of rooms are smaller. It's more intimate. Uh, Staff-wise, it probably takes... 30 people to run a hotel our size and another 70 to 80 people for the restaurant and the lounge that are contained within the building. So probably a total of 130 jobs, give mm -hmm. or take, that will be created. Uh, and, our, and by the way, we're looking for a few good people. <laughs> <laughs> what does a boutique hotel mean in the restaurant industry? If, if I've not stayed in one, what, what might I expect? That's a great question because to me, a boutique hotel has an independent operator and the company the Kempton Group out of San Francisco was was kind of the creator of this concept they would bring in Emeril or, or Wolfgang Puck or a celebrity chef as they're known and they put their name on it and they brand it with them because then you're not going to eat at a hotel restaurant you know you're going to eat at Emeril's restaurant so I found the next best thing in Oklahoma City which is Michelle and Alain Boutillon the owners of La Baguette and we had worked on this for a long time and they came in and opened Soleil restaurant and EXO lounge in the basement and for people that do know them they have great gregarious personalities and know how to you know uh, entertain and do it right but that's important uh, that's a very big part of what makes a boutique a boutique and you don't have the big large lobbies that people might see with a, a name brand hotel no uh, those really vary on the on the size of the building that's delivered to you and, the, and my lobby was fairly predicated on what I could do and and uh, but yes I think generally they're going to be smaller more intimate lobbies mm -hmm. and in this particular case I think the lobby is is absolutely the perfect size I mean you can hang out with a group of 10 or 15 people or there can be several pockets more intimate groups and uh, yeah. You're in a startup period now but once the startup period's over and you're in the uh, I know you're fully functioning, but once the word gets out and you're getting the kind of occupancy that you'd hope for, what is that? Uh, what is that? I know you want 100 percent. What all is the, the time, goal? I suppose. Well, 100 percent in practical, uh -huh. unless you're, you know, in some uh, very unusual market where you have 12, 12 months out of the year and weekends are strong. But we hope to hit in the mid 70s. And what that means for us is mostly business travelers will come through and stay with us. We won't have many convention groups. And so if, if it stays true to the course like the ambassador, we will be full during the week. And on the weekends, it'll be, it'll be more your social market. But, but on the other hand, here, I believe, because of this property, that the social market, this will be where the preference for the weddings will be for, or for weddings and anniversaries and bar mitzvahs and, and, and those types of special events. Because, again, we have a little different product, a little more prestigious image to deliver. Uh, product wise. How is the hotel business changing? What, where are we in 2006? What is a guest expecting now when they check into a hotel? Uh, people expect a lot. And, <laughs> and they, well put. Well, they, expect, they, expect, they expect to feel, in our hotel, let me just tell you what we expect to give them, what we want to deliver. We want them to feel like they're coming into a home. We want them to feel like it's very personal, where our staff may recognize that they've been there before and any special needs they had. Uh, we want their room to just, w where they want to stay in their room, where they say, you know, I, I really like my bed. We have great beds. 
We have Sealy presidential mattresses that are 21 inch thick mattresses. We have 34 inch plasma screen TVs. We have iPod docking stations. We have walk-in showers with glass doors and fantastic you know, shower heads with a lot of power. And so people really are looking for an experience that's going to make them feel good. How does, you, how does your pricing compare with uh, uh, the other hotels in downtown Oklahoma City? Well, it's, <coughs> it's hard to say exactly on any given day, but the general, I guess, comment I could make is that 20 to 25 percent above the market would be probably where it will land day in and day out. Mm -hmm. um, as far as location goes, what in your choosing a hotel site, whether it's Oklahoma City or Tulsa or somewhere else, what's what's the first thing you're looking for? What, what do you want? The traffic? Would you would look for automobile count? Do you look for a large green space? A convention center? What, what, what would you prefer? You know, it really, I would say that it depends on the market you're going into and, and what you're going after. For example, in the call cords uh, proximity, it is fantastic proximity to the Cox Arena and to the Ford Center. Now, Again, we are not a convention hotel. However, there are many events that go on there, and I think we'll pick up a lot of the people mm -hmm. that come to the, particularly the Ford Center maybe, or come over for a sporting event or a concert, and they're coming over from Tulsa or Dallas, and, and, and again, kind of a specialty niche. I think for the business traveler, again, we're very accessible, we're very visible, and we're right in the heart of the CBD. And another, another thing about Oklahoma City that's really fantastic is that the central business district is in the center, effectively, of of everything, and you know that isn't always the case. Like in Tulsa, it's more on the nor northern perimeter, and but but literally, we're right in the middle of all of all the activity in all directions. So, mm -hmm. what about the uh, amenities that a guest might expect when they walk in and they're willing to to pay a, a, a premium rate, but they want premium? Well, again, service. I covered some of those, and yeah. but. You know, our room package, the packages, the bedding and the, the, the furniture and the TVs, our room package is probably, again, cost-wise, maybe 30, 40 percent more to produce than a typical, say, convention hotel. And so hopefully the amenities, uh, notwithstanding what you see in the room and the TVs and the beds and the showers and so forth, I, I hope they... Uh, have that in the service level and the quality of the restaurant that's in there and the uh, you know just the, the overall presentation if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I have about uh, 30 seconds left in the show. Why don't you tell people where the call cord is located in downtown Oklahoma City? The call cord is on the northwest corner of Robinson and Sheridan which is uh, directly across the street from the Myriad Gardens and Caddy Corner from the Cox Center and uh, you know, I, I would like to think that we become a place that the people, this is a place where people take people when they come in town, they want yeah. them to stay here, that they're proud of it, and they say, this is Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. One thing I had heard was although the hotel opened in 1910, it took four years to construct the original building. Right. And so we're 100 years ago. It was Actually, it started in 1906 and was completed in 1910. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Regardless, so it is 100, it's, it's 100 it's years 100, since they, since they wow. started building it, and so it's a, right. it's a special time. Paul right. Corey, congratulations Thank on you. your success in both Thank cities. You. Thank you. Paul Corey, our guest today on The Verdict. Kit and I will have a final word when we return. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. Hi, honey. You've got to check this out. What? 
What are we listening to? I had digital phone service installed today. It sounds just like before. I know, but it's going to save us a ton of money. With Cox Digital Telephone, you'll save big every month. Keep your same phone number and get your favorite calling features. Just pay less. That does sound good. You should hear the upstairs phone. Cox Communications and the Oklahoma Historical Society present the first in a new series of programs created especially for Oklahoma Centennial. You cannot understand Oklahoma history without understanding the history of American Indians. They decided to preserve Sequoia's last home. His home has never been moved. It's on the exact spot they built it in 1829. Voices of Oklahoma, the American Indian experience. See it all this month on the Cox Channel. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers wrapping up the show. We visited with Paul Corey, the developer of the Call Court Hotel in Oklahoma City, the Ambassador Hotel in Tulsa, and he's really found a niche. Well, he really has, and uh, it will be interesting to see how the community here supports the Call Court. I think it will be a smashing success. Uh, it's, uh, of course, we saw the pictures of some of it, but it's uh, just a gorgeous place, mm -hmm. and it's a destination. We call this show a, a, a destination place in Oklahoma City, and I think it will turn out to be that. You know, in 1999, Oklahoma City downtown had one hotel, and uh, the, if the current plans of the constructions that are currently in progress and all that happens, there'll be seven. Uh, before long and you know with Tulsa building its downtown arena it really is a time of downtown resurgence and and that's good for people like Paul Corey who have a, a dream and a belief and a historical believe in historical preservation to open up these older buildings find a second hundred years uh, out of a building that's really a landmark site. Well and the other part of that is that thank goodness we're having people develop properties like the call court and the ambassador by people who care by mm -hmm. people who are willing to do the job right, spend the time to do the research necessary, to uh, build it right, and those type of people like Paul mm -hmm. will certainly be successful in this business. I want to drive people to our website, theverdict.tv. You can go to this site, and, and besides seeing some great pictures of Kent and myself, yeah. you can also uh, tell us about a story that you'd like to see on a future edition of The Verdict, and we invite you to do that. Until next week, for Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you then. Proceeding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.